right, so here it is totally completed. This is also the first thing I've had 3D printed that I branded in 3D. I basically just did that for fun. Although I'd have to say even though this is fully operational and works exactly as intended, and works well, aside from a few minor problems, it's still a beta because it's just too complicated, I think, for someone without much experience to put together on their own, so it's not really ideal in terms of DIY, which is what I was intending, although I'm still going to release the design for anybody who wants to improve upon it. Let's open it up so you can see inside. So, the biggest problem post completion that I've discovered is that the laser alignment is off. And I've tried fixing that several different ways. Tilting the lens, repositioning the laser, and nothing has really had a su sufficient impact on the laser alignment. So that's a technical problem that I haven't quite figured out how to solve yet. But I'm sure I can find out via Wikipedia or whatever how to properly align a laser in a device like this. I just haven't done the research yet. So anyway, this is what the final product looks like all wired up and everything. And uh, these lights, these are 45 degree white LEDs. And uh, at first you might think that's suboptimal due to the, uh, the fact that they don't project very far. But really when you're using a weapon at night, you're probably going to want to be using it at close range in the first place. So I found that the uh, lighting system with these uh, flat LEDs actually, at least for my purposes, is more effective than like a focused LEDs that actually have a, a lens in them to give a nice uh, tight beam. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I don't know, there isn't really much more to say other than this is the beta version and uh, I'm just going to toss it out there and if anybody else wants to play around with it and try to improve the design, please do so. It's, uh, I think it needs work, to be honest, to be production ready. And uh, yeah, you can sort of see the alignment issue that I'm having here. It gets more dramatic at a distance. It's probably off by like one or two degrees, which is sort of a showstopper when it comes to actually using the site for accuracy. What else did I want to say? Oh yeah, definitely um, if you want to print one of these out yourself and set it up, uh, be prepared for some frustration because as I said before, it, it, it is a pretty challenging thing to DIY even being the designer and someone who uh, has some experience in various areas specific to making things like this I found it to be quite a challenge so just a uh, heads up there anyway overall I'm pretty happy with it I mean obviously there are improvements that can be made as far as aesthetics I think is probably the biggest one right now because functionally everything works as intended and aside from the alignment issue probably some kind of a um, system to 
adjust the alignment of the laser would be uh, useful for a future revision. And as I said, aesthetics is probably my biggest concern because it just uh, it doesn't look horrible, but it looks it looks unrefined essentially, especially with the battery pack sticking out of the back. But uh, yeah, anyway, another uh, notch in my bed post on this one for a successfully completed 3D print functional interacting with real world objects. So thank you for your interest and thanks for watching. See you next time. This is the alpha version down here. So I actually managed to get it down from four parts to two. Didn't even fit on the rail properly. The hinge was in a bad position and it relied on this <clears throat> ridiculous mechanism I created to clip into the rail slot. This uh, beta version here has many significant improvements. So first of all what I did was I changed the hinge position from the front to the side which allows for much easier access for inserting the components and it also allows it to clip onto the rail much easier. Additionally, I use sort of what has become the industry standard mechanism for uh, clamping of these rail attachments, <clears throat> which is to have one whole side, or at least part of the side that uh, slides onto the rail, be secured via a bolt. And that really, really improves the design. So I took this standard aluminum tack nail and I ground down one side and cut the uh, head off of the other and then sanded that down so now I have a nice hinge pin that's exactly the right uh, length and shape for my hinge so now all that's left to do is install it. One of the best things about this particular hinge system is that because it's so high tension the uh, pieces stay together really well all by themselves even without a pin so it makes it a lot easier to in actually insert the pin I'm just gonna cheat a little and use a pair of pliers here save my fingers There we go, we have basically a perfect hinge. All I have to do is unscrew this bolt here, keeping it closed. You can test it out. Because of the tension so high, that pin is never going to come out of there on its own. It's never just going to slide out or fall out. But if it ever starts to poke out of one side, all you have to do is push it down a little bit. Yeah, I'm very pleased with this hinge system. Suits my purposes very well. Very strong and reliable. So this is one of the core components of the project. This is just your typical laser diode attached to a PCB with a little uh, plastic enclosure and lens assembly that you can pull out of virtually any uh, cheap uh, laser pointer that you would buy at a hardware store or novelty shop. They cost about $3 and uh, they're virtually universal. This assembly is what uh, my rail attachment is designed to be compatible with and those are, as I said, almost universal across the board. Due to the fact that there was a small resistor on this PCB, I wanted to take advantage of that instead of having to add one in line so I just used a hobby saw to cut the switch portion off of the PCB 
So I'm going to solder my wire directly to this contact point. And this will also give me the advantage of being able to just uh, s slip this in and out. A little, make it a little bit easier for testing purposes. Very rarely do I actually buy things like wire when I'm working on a project. I just love to scavenge and recycle. This is a twisted pair solid copper core wire that I extracted from an ethernet cable that uh, was defective. Uh, this is excellent wire for projects like this. High conductivity, easy to solder, you don't have to twist any little wires and uh, connection points are also a little more stable. So that's what I'm going to do to wire this la laser. And one of the nice things about this project is the space is so small that I don't even need to use a lot of wire. So probably like uh, six to eight centimeters is probably going to be good for each component. So th this is a nice little hack of convenience. I need to bridge these two LEDs in parallel for my circuit. And th since they need to go on the inside, normally they would be kind of hard to get to. But since these holes are the same on the outside and the inside, I can just temporarily push them in here to hold them in place nicely while I bridge the circuit. And since the holes are the same distance apart, when I put them on the inside, they will fit perfectly into the holes even though they're soldered. So for this first step here, I cut off the legs of the LEDs and then I trim them down and I'm actually going to use these to bridge the uh, LEDs. So this is kind of a nice little technique to uh, not waste any materials and the uh, legs for the LEDs are actually ideally suited for this kind of thing. Alright, so that was a huge pain in the ass. I found that the best way was to solder these was to just do a quick dirty solder on one side and then do a precision solder on the other side. That seemed to be the most efficient method. So this is basically done aside from soldering wires. So I'm just going to do a quick power test here to check my LED assembly. This is a 10 volt uh, solar cell which can actually pick up enough ambient energy from the room lights to power these LEDs just for a quick test. So it looks like they're working just fine. The parallel circuit is performing optimally. Alright, so the LEDs are fully wired and they're inserted fully into the casing. So that's one step done. In this case the battery pack is integrated and this is kind of an irritating thing to have to point out because it's basically my fault. But because this model is painted and that adds to the tolerances. The batteries do not fit in perfectly on the painted version. So I actually had to use an X-Acto blade and shave off about 0.5 millimeters on each side of the retaining wall so that the battery would slide in there. Of course, a beneficial side effect of that is that the battery is incredibly secure in there now. As you can see, it's not even sliding back and forth. This little window in the back is actually put in there so that you can pop the batteries out from the outside although uh, in this case that's going to be a little bit of a challenge due to that tolerance problem but anyway I got one of the batteries in there and now what I'm going to do is make the contacts for each side of the battery pack sorry you can't really see much due to the lighting you can sort of see on this side but anyway, there's going to be a contact on each side with a, water, a wire attached. And that's going to constitute the battery pack. Alright, so I'm going to try a slightly different strategy here with my contacts. What I'm going to do is just 
melt the plastic coating in the middle of each of these and apply a drop of solder to bridge these two wires and I'm hoping that will take a little bit less time than my other technique and should provide just as adequate a conducting surface as an entire bare wire so let's give that a go well it wasn't a complete failure but it's a little bit messier than I like so I think what I'm going to do with the other contact is just shave a little bit off the middle of the wire yeah so much better results that second time around it's ugly as hell but I'm confident that it's going to provide the conductivity that I need for the battery pack yeah so it took me a little while to get the uh, positioning and the proportions right for the wires but that's what it's supposed to look like in position so the laser is in now too and I thought I might as well just uh, give that a test too before I solder everything up seems to be working just fine too that's a good sign all right, so on to the final phase. This is the circuit schematic. Although it's so simple, it almost doesn't even need to be drawn out. There's only one switch, that's the breakdown of the three position switch. I just did that for the sake of uh, illustration purposes. 